How's everybody doing? Here at uh, Glen Place Mall in Brunswick, Georgia, right off of I-95. It's going to show how a blockchain has uh, uh, redefined the retail industry and how it's going to redefine the retail industry. A lot of malls across the country have gone out, but Glen Place Mall actually has uh, fared pretty well. It's moved, moved the theater here to Embassy Suites Hotel. So, and Chuckle Island is not too far away, where we talked about in the other video. So it's pretty uh, nice shopping center here. If you come to Chuckle Island or Brunswick, you have a place to uh, shop at, but you need to go to Nows. All right, how's everybody doing today? It's Robert from Breaking the Chain USA. And what we're going to talk about is um, retail, actually. How blockchain can affect retail. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're actually uh, here at Glen Place Mall in Brunswick, Georgia, which is halfway between Savannah and Jacksonville. And uh, actually, surprisingly, this mall, I used to come here when I was a kid with my family. Going to Disney World, we would stop off and eat at the mall. They actually had a um, Piccadilly cafeteria there, which is no longer there anymore. Uh, I think they have a Ruby Tuesday there now and uh, some more places in the food court. Mall is pretty much occupied. I think the Sears is out of business there, but they also have a uh, Missy Sweet Hotels. Really nice hotel and they're very nice. So uh, I know there's some money in Jekyll Island not too far away and uh, Brunswick, uh, Georgia actually. Uh, they've actually uh, done a good job in uh, keeping the mall afloat and they do have a big port there and uh, I think a lot of a lot of times you know, people say malls are going out of business, which is true. If you go through the United States, you'll see a lot of shopping centers, or well, shopping malls, it is, that are, that are uh, closed down. But I think the city also has a lot to do with it. If the city is willing to support the mall, like work with uh, the mall as far as rent, I know a lot of times uh, the rent will be too high. But... Um, Sometimes different cities have innovative ways to work with the shopping mall to actually uh, uh, consider it a vital part of the community. You know, whole different events there, festivals, so forth, to uh, keep the mall going. Yeah, that, that's very important. So sometimes you would say a mall that's out of business, it might it might not be the, um, it may really not be all the mall's fault. It could be the city's fault because they both are correlated. They have to uh, you know integrate themselves and, and work together like anything else. So I give uh, Brunswick, Georgia some credit for keeping that mall going because that's been there a long time. And uh, it looked pretty, uh, stores were pretty filled or the mall was pretty filled. I saw very few empty spaces in the mall. So uh, that's that's an asset. That's a credit, I, I actually, uh, for that mall and that community. And uh, like I said, Brunswick, you have Jekyll Island. We talked about Jekyll Island in one of my other videos, if you haven't seen it yet. That's posted uh, Florida, Georgia uh, coastline. And uh, we actually talked about uh, Jekyll Island and the history of that, which I'll get more in detail on that. But on uh, this segment here, we're going to talk about uh, blockchain and uh, retail, how it's reshaping retail for the most part. And uh, you can see right here, we have uh, several, there's several articles on this. If you go to Google, I mean, it's unbelievable. Trans uh, transparency, reducing counterfeit goods, merging markets, warranties, shipping, putting everything together on the distributor, distributed ledger. It's so much more efficient. Everything is there. Everything is um, laid out perfectly. So, you know, if you have an item, you want to take it back to the store and you lost your receipt, it's on the blockchain. So, I mean, it just makes it so much more efficient. And it's going to be integrated in the next few months, probably, especially Christmas. I, I mean, Christmas coming up. It wouldn't surprise me if a lot of retailers online, Amazon and what have you, and shopping in different stores have actually uh, started to integrate this. I think, you know, for survival with everyone online shopping, it's going to be a critical part to integrate blockchain to remain, to survive and remain competitive. You're going to see that. Don't be like Sears. Sears, when I was a kid, Sears was a go-to store. Anytime I wanted to remember painting the, my dad's fence, we would go to Sears and Rocky Mount. They had an old Sears downtown. We would get painted and move to a um, newer mall, actually. But for 50 years, I mean, it, 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 Sears was a uh, place to go. And shows how they had a massive customer ba uh, base, actually. And... Uh, just out of the way if I can. All right. And it goes into detail here on uh, 
You know, they had everything you needed. You know, you had tools, everything closed, everything was in one place. You know, it's kind of like Walmart is today. I mean, and their quality of products like Craftsman Tools, Craftsman Tools, I know Lowe's is selling them now, but Craftsman is was great product. Lifetime warranty, I mean, you know, you, you could get a just poor wrench from there and you could drop it off a 30-story building and that thing was still good as new when it hit the ground. I mean, Sears was quality, quality merchandise. But there is a video, I think it was Digital Asset Investor, he showed this, or somebody on YouTube. I can't, I'm looking for that video, I can't find it. But back in, uh, I want to say 2005, 2008, CEO of Sears and Kmart, Kmart and Sears had uh, basically merged. The video, this was like Good Morning America, one of the TV shows in the morning. It shows that the, the uh, journalist asked the CEO of Sears, what about Amazon and online shopping? And they laugh. They actually, if I can find that video, I will post it. But I will look and I cannot find it. Some of you may uh, may know where it's at. But um, it actually, if you, if, you, if you find it, send it to me. Definitely email it to me. I want to look at it again. But I remember it showed the CEO of Sears laughing at Amazon saying it was a joke. It would never compete with Sears. And look what happened. Amazon has taken over Sears. You know, it's, it's the same. I mean, with blockchain, it's going to happen. You know, it's going to, it's going to take over um, a, a lot of life as we know it, so to speak, not only in retail, but all other uh, uh, aspects of life. You know, it's going to happen. And uh, there actually was a big blockchain summit, actually, on retail that just met in Shanghai a couple, uh, two days. Well, actually, no, I think it's, it was actually yesterday, uh, December the 14th. Um, this, uh, we're talking about um, in, uh, entertainment and retail and blockchain, how it's focusing, um, play an important role in uh, industrial transformation, streamline process, reduce friction, uh, all the stuff that we talk about on this channel. So, um, you know, it's, it's moving that way. It is definitely moving that way. And IBM, hey, IBM's leading the way again. IBM is doing a lot of stuff. I remember IBM used to be. I have an old. I have an old IBM computer from 1998 or something like that. Because back in the day, IBM was the computer to get. It was IBM or Hewlett Packard, and that was basically it. That, I mean, IBM and then Lenovo makes their um, laptops now, which is a great product. Actually, actually, I had one and I took it back to get HP. I got. Because I didn't have enough memory to do a lot of my blockchain projects I was working on for school. So I got the HP. But uh, Lenovo actually was a good product uh, as far as a laptop. Really good. And uh, Lenovo basically bought IBM. And they're based, uh, the U.S. office is based in Raleigh, North Carolina. At the airport in RTP. But IBM is really, they're pushing, well two things IBM's pushing. Artificial intelligence and blockchain. They know where, the mar they know where this is headed. So you're looking at retail. IBM's coming up with retail solutions and blockchain. And, you know, this is going to be the norm in a year or two, probably. Consumers, suppliers, retailers, I mean, they're re reinventing them, major businesses, major brands. I mean, why IBM blockchain? They're a leader in it. You know, they have that market. They have that niche that a lot of people don't have, a lot of people, businesses don't have. Kind of one of the first movers, actually, to uh, as far as a large company in this uh, segment. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. But um, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, information on blockchain. Like right here, blockchain for retail. This is from uh, Cointelegraph. Uh, the potential that's going to be used soon. You know, hopefully you're going to see some of the digital assets we talk about here. Maybe uh, Apollo, especially in foreign in other countries, like your African countries. Uh, hopefully some VeChain for monitoring information. You know, maybe Civic Coin as far as uh, verifying counterfeit products. Uh, VeChain can use that too. VeChain for counterfeit. XRP for payments will be huge, especially since they're in with R3 Corridor, uh, working with MasterCard. You know, getting those payments processed as quick as possible, not having to wait three or four days for it to clear the bank and everything. You know, that would be liquidity wise would be incredible. It would be a, a unbelievable economic boost to the to the economy. 
you know, so uh, I, I think honestly, I think, you know, businesses, a lot of businesses I've talked with, they're ready for it. It's just the uh, uh, regulatory framework, each country and other countries, like I said, have already passed it, except for the United States, United States Congress. <sighs> It's like they're little kids, you know, not like I said before, they should be drug tested. They should be drug tested. If you can't do your job, you know, any other job, you would be fired. So uh, Congress has some issues, a lot of issues. I always made a statement, statement if they then close down a lot of the mental hospitals, a lot of people you see out there now, even politicians, would be in those mental hospitals right now. I mean... You see people out there, you may know me as people walking the street, people doing crazy stuff on the news, uh, dating websites, people emailing their private parts and junk to people, I mean, stuff like that. You know, 30, 40 years ago, these people would be in uh, a mental hospital to get the help that they need. And we need, I, I'm sorry, we need more of those institutions for people to get the help they need. I hate to say it. <laughs> I mean, it's true. So, uh, we got some work to do, definitely. Not only in the U.S., but the whole world, for the most part. <laughs> but, um, here we go. My computer went down a little bit. Let's back up. Okay. And I don't know what that is coming from. Hang on. That's coming from my other, that's, that's coming from my other website. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. That, that was actually coming uh, from another page, actually. So let me get rid of that. That was actually Georgia Satellites I was listening to. Uh, I always made this statement that if um, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, if they ever, uh, well, not Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, the Heartbreakers since Tom Petty has passed, if they ever got back together again, I would think that Dan Baird of the Georgia Satellites would make a good lead singer. To replace Tom Petty, especially for the seventies and eighties songs, he had you know, seen him perform some of those songs, and actually he would uh, uh, fill that role pretty well. I think uh, Georgia Satellites, very underrated band from the eighties. If you ask me, they had bad management. That's what happened <laughs> for the most part. But anyway, blockchain is going to be interesting. I mean, in retail, you're going to see different kind. Of, I mean, I can't even. It would take a whole week to talk about different a uh, aspects and avenues that, that uh, are going to happen with that. You know, we can only imagine. I mean, it's going to make things so much more uh, efficient and better for the most part, I think. But uh, let's see this Forbes article right here I found to the Sears. All right. And what we're going to talk about right now, right quick before we end this video, we're actually going to look at some um, hot home markets in southeastern Georgia. And we'll take this down to my uh, South Georgia area right here. And we'll go into Savannah. The other video, the Florida Georgia Coast video I did regarding uh, Jeff Wow and I actually talked about Brunswick real estate. So we're going to talk about Savannah, some of the other areas. If you've ever been to Savannah, Savannah's a great town, a historic town, somewhere to Charleston. It kind of feels more like New Orleans, if you ask me, uh, but a lot cleaner. No offense, New Orleans, but it, it is fun town. Uh, River Streets, awesome place. Tabby Island is the beach, uh, Savannah's Beach, about, t about 12 minutes, 12, 15 minutes away. You go through Wilmington Island, you're in Tabby Island. Um, St. Simmons Island, that's close to Jekyll Island. St. Mary's, you're down on the Florida Georgia line down there. And Brunswick's right here in Vadasta. Vadasta's a little inland, uh, Vadasta State University. Uh, Past uh, Okefenokee Swamp and Thomasville's close to Tallahassee, actually, right on the line there. But uh, I'll show you a map of what we have right here. Yeah, South, South Georgia. If you go coming from South Carolina to Florida, Georgia's only like 112 miles. I mean, you're you're through Georgia in like less than an hour and a half. Less than an hour and a half from South Carolina, you're in Florida. Uh, you actually pick up the Jacksonville radio stations as soon as you pass Savannah, actually, and. Um, my boss is right here, Okie Finucky right here. Forget cell phone coverage. You won't have it anywhere here. <laughs> Tons of alligators there, so be careful. And Brunswick, Jack Wallen's right here between Savannah and Jacksonville. And uh, I have people asked about that. I always said coastal Georgia is one of the most underrated places in the United States. 
Uh, I think it gets overshadowed by Charleston and uh, the Florida coast, if you ask me. But, you know, St. Simmons Island is a great beach. Jeff Island, there are great beaches. Georgia doesn't have that many beaches, only a few, about three beaches. But the beaches they have are really peaceful and tranquil. And it's um, affordable to live there in the weather, you know. I mean, in January, you're going to have 70, 70, 75 degree days a lot of time. Never really snows or anything or gets that cold there. But uh, let's go down to Savannah right here. And here we go again with my CAPTCHA. It loves to do some CAPTCHA. No matter where I go, it's the craziest stuff right here. Crosswalk, crosswalk, crosswalk. <laughs> and this should take us there. Here we go, yeah. Savannah's not bad. I mean, check this out, guys. Check it out. Now, under the condition of this house right here, $90,000 for this house in coastal Georgia, not bad. Like I tell people, especially if you're up north, freezing your butt off right now, getting a six dollars $700 electric bill, and property taxes are out to yin-yang up there. You know, these houses are not bad. $125,000 grand a new home for $189,000 in Savannah. Uh, 122,000. These houses are good. I mean, you got some upper houses too. If you get like on the beach and so forth. Like I said before, coastal Georgia now is curved in, so it really doesn't get the force of hurricanes unless they do a due west, you know. But you got some expensive. When you're, you want a Georgia mansion, 1.8 million. Now you got some expensive houses too. Uh, Henry Ford actually, um, his uh, home actually is in Richmond Hill. Uh, Henry Ford's passed away, but his uh, winter home was actually Richmond Hill, Georgia. Beautiful place if you get a chance to go by there. He did a lot for the community when he uh, lived there in the wintertime with schools and everything, donating money. Henry Ford was a great guy. They have a little museum there now. You can actually see his uh, see his uh, uh, home place and uh, what he did there. But, uh, yeah, Savannah's a cool town. And while I'm here, we'll, we'll pull that up, actually. Uh, let's see, Richmond Hill. Henry Ford. Yeah, here we go. Henry Ford Plantation. Beautiful area right here. Beautiful antebellum home built in 1937. A big oak trees there. It used to be another, it used to be called Rich, uh, I think Richmond Hill Plantation. This was actually burned by General Sherman in the Civil War, or as we call it, War Between the States down here. And uh, he built it back, built on the property, actually. And they wanted to rename the community uh, uh, Ford Plantation, but he insisted they name it Richmond Hill. And uh, beautiful area. Picture of the mansion right here. There we go. City that Henry Ford built, Richmond Hill. A little history right here. It's always, uh, always a good time. Uh, I mean, if you're going to Florida, check out the Georgia coast. I mean, it's... There's a lot of hidden gems there, you know, that, that you really want that uh, a lot of people don't know about. It's really peaceful, really laid back. Seafood is awesome there, too. Good Brunswick stew, too. That Brunswick stew, low country dish, Brunswick, Georgia, they know how to make it. Trust me. They really do. And if you've never been to Savannah, I'll show you some pics of Savannah. Savannah has a lot of tree lined streets as well. And a lot of uh, public squares, a lot of green space in Savannah, too. And we get to the official website right here of Savannah. Great town, beautiful city. Plenty of fountains here. Um, ten things to do in Savannah. A lot of good art scene there as well. Uh, Incredible town, a lot of history. River Street downtown, um, right along the river, a lot of places to go, taverns. I think you can drink in the street on New Orleans, too. I mean, until like four in the morning. But they keep it clean, though. I mean, downtown Savannah's clean. Beautiful town. It's, Savannah's definitely uh, worth it. You know, the most haunted city in America, too. A lot of ghost stories in Savannah. People actually go to the graveyards in Savannah, believe it or not. A colonial park cemetery, and like just hang out. Like they'll have picnics. <laughs> they'll just you know hang out in the in the cemetery. There, it's kind of kind of cool. I mean, 
I mean, is it kind of creepy? Yeah, to me it was kind of creepy. I don't know when we hang around in the graveyard, but you see people walking their dogs there, like like a city park, you know, and it's so much history here. Uh, Savannah had was uh, the yellow fever epidemic hit it. Uh, Civil War. Uh, Sherman didn't burn it down because he thought it was too beautiful. So he spared it. Still had a lot of deaths. The Revolutionary War. I mean, you had a lot of people die in Savannah. And they're actually buried underneath the streets. You're walking on bodies, believe it or not. They're underneath the streets, though. But uh, a credible town, though. A really good town to go to and hang out. They have a place called the Pirate's House there. Where uh, Blackbeard uh, used to frequent. And ca the Captain Flint from Treasure Island uh, supposedly died there. And uh, if you read the Treasure Island uh, book, but Pirate's House actually has southern cuisine there, great atmosphere, and it's the oldest building in Georgia, actually. Here are some pictures of it, and they have a little cellar. It used to have an underground tunnel. There's tunnels that uh, interconnect the underground in uh, Savannah, and actually uh, the pirates used to smuggle goods and uh, capture people, actually, in the tunnels. But they are boarded up now. I mean, are they dilapidated, and falling down? You can't go with them anymore. But uh, uh, it was amazing because you actually the tunnels were actually used in the Revolutionary War. Charleston had them too uh, to actually escape from the British. And in the Civil War, <clears throat> they used them to escape uh, from the Union Army to, when it came to town. But originally, they were built to escape from pirates because pirates would actually. Um, Whitebeard, um, <clears throat> Captain Kidd, several pirates would actually go to Savannah and try to loot the town. So people would hide. They would have trap doors in their houses that would go and be interconnected uh, to the tunnels um, in Savannah and Charleston as well. St. Augustine, Florida, they may have them. Richmond, Rich Virginia, they have tunnels too underneath the ground too. I've never really been in there, but... Um, Honey Tunnels of Savannah. This is actually a good uh, website. But some of the tunnels actually, I mean, you can't get in there. They're bricked off like the Pirate's House. They have one that talks about a Pirate's House right here. This is the Pirate's House. And theirs is actually boarded up where you can't get in there. And this goes into the history of the ghost and all that good stuff. Great town, Savannah is. Great town. But anyhow, all right, folks, this is all we have right here. Like if you have any questions on real estate along the South Georgia area, please uh, email me at American Real Estate. Some more tunnels right here. Wow, they're creepy. <laughs> American Real Estate, R E F at gmail dot com. Anything on blockchain, breaking the chain USA at gmail dot com. And be sure to do, uh, get a Ledger Nano S, as in my description in the video below, and also Coinbase account. And look at these tunnels; it's pretty amazing. I Man, I wish you could still—I wish you could still go in there. I mean, some of these places, but uh, eh, it would be too dangerous, though. But if, if there's a ghost, this is where they're at. But I've never, I've never seen a ghost, but uh, huh. It's interesting. All right. That's all we have right now for this video. And I will talk with you later. Thank you so much for watching.